Okay, so here I'm going to go over the basics of a gram stain. And this is used for identifying certain bacteria based on the type of exterior structure that these prokaryotes have. So starting with the basics. Gram stain, as it says in the name, it's a staining technique for prim primarily identification of bacteria. There's something called a gram positive and a gram negative. So what this is referring to is gram positive bacteria located up here. They have a very thick outer cell wall here, uh, peptidoglycan. Gram negative have this kind of protective outer layer here. This doesn't allow the stain to really penetrate. So when I think about gram positive, think of positively accepting the dye, and gram negative not kind of accepting the main dye there in the outer outer walls. So for example here, we have our plasma membrane, and this outer area here is our peptidoglycan. This is our gram positive. See how it's very thick. Here, we, there is a peptidoglycan layer in a gram negative, but this exterior here is kind of a polysaccharide and a protein. The peptidoglycan here is really good at absorbing some of this purple dye, but because it's embedded below another membrane, that, that stain really doesn't work all that well. Or if it's a gram positive bacteria, because of that thick peptidoglycan wall being on the outside, it is able to accept some of that dye. So the difference in dye retention is dependent on the physical and chemical properties of the bacteria cell wall. In this case, the exterior portion of the cell wall. This gram stain was developed in the 1800s by someone by the last name Graham, and that's where it gets its name from. So here's the basic procedure. So just remember, gram-positive bacteria have thick, dense, relatively non-porous walls, while in comparison, gram-negative bacteria have thin walls surrounded by lipid-rich membranes. Think of lipids as kind of repelling things. This is a um, detailed procedure here. I'm going to go through it kind of step by step for you. Another example of the gram staining procedure, what things are going to look like. Again, we're looking at basically making our bacteria cells either purple or red. But let's go through this kind of this procedure. Again, I got this um, off online here. I made some modifications myself, but you always want to be careful to cite your sources. So I'm including that here. Step one of a gram stain procedure, prepare the smear. So you're taking your bacteria and you're smearing them on a slide. Suspend some material stained in the drop, um, stained in a drop of water on a microscope slide, spread the drop about the size of a nickel, allow it to air dry initially, and then heat fix by gently warming above the flame or other heat source. What this is doing, this is fixing the bacteria. So we're basically sticking them to the slide here. If we just let the drop of water dry, uh, they, when we re-wet them, they're just going to slide around. This fixing procedure not only denatures um, them, and allows it, but it allows them to also to stick to the slide. We want to be careful making them as thin as possible. If it's too thick, it won't work really great. So thin is very important here. Okay, procedure two. Apply the primary stain. Flood the stain with, in this case, crystal violet. It's a very purple color. Allow stain for 30 seconds to a minute and rinse water to remove excessive stain. So here, just the little circles and boxes are different bacteria. We flood the whole area with crystal violet. Then we let it sit for a period of time. Then, here's our stain bacteria. We flood the smear with iodine solution. We'll allow that to stand for 30 seconds to a minute. You'll notice, technically at this point of the gram stain procedure, all of our bacteria are purple. A couple other important areas we'll go through and we'll change those colors. We want to rinse off and remove excessive iodine. So now that all the iodine that was here, we've rinsed all that off. And now we just technically have all our cells being purple, but we're not done yet. Step five is to decolorize. This is an important step. When I dip 95% alcohol, or drip 95% alcohol across the entire slide for only about five seconds, this will basically decolorize those cells that aren't holding on to that stain very strongly. You can notice here they're a lighter purple color, where these are still a strong purple. If you let it sit for too long, it'll decolorize all the cells. So not only is the procedure and steps important, but also the timing. Then we want to rinse to remove all excess alcohol. And what that's going to do is kind of leave us with the purple cells, and now these are decolorized. We want to counter stain. The saffron solution is very kind of deep red solution. Pour this over the side and let this stand for 30 seconds. Then we want to rinse, dry, and observe. What that saffron stain does is it takes those that don't have any color and it just binds lightly, and those are our gram negatives. 
we don't let it sit too long or it'll kind of mess up the um, crystal violet of the gram positives. So this is why timing is important. So rinse with water, remove the excess of stain, blot dry, and observe how the oil emerging of the microscope. Again, this is that same basic procedure. I walked you through it. You can, you're welcome to pause the video and look this over. If you feel this might be more helpful. But this is kind of the end result that you get. And as a result, we can see if they're very rod shaped or very circular shaped. Both of these are gram positives, indicating these have that very thick pepinoglycan wall. Example gram stains for the negative. Here you see the rods in the circles again. Again, with a very thin pepinoglycan and basically having a thicker lipid on the lipid layer on the outside. Here, this slide contains both. This is from the previous image. And this contains uh, both of the gram positives and gram negatives on the same slide. Looking again, a little closer look at those gram negatives, zooming in on that, you know, that so cell layers here, the cell walls, we see there's an inner and outer membrane. The pepinoglycan is located here, kind of sandwiched between the two. As a result, that crystal violet can't really bind or stick to this very well, and this is why we call them gram negatives. Lastly, here's a couple of um, video links if you're interested in learning more. Uh, if you feel that you just want to review, you're welcome to watch the, the video again. Hope that was helpful.